Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield talking to the big stars. And Sharon D. Clark, you are my favourite. Oh, God bless you. It's good to see you again, Alex. You keep going and you keep working. And the reason you keep working is because you're the best in the business. Congratulations. <laughs> what can I say to that? Thank you. I'll tell you what it is. You're different and you're odd and you've got a voice like no other. And we need that, don't we? Because it seems to me, I was just talking to Chloe about this, right, who's okay. the lead in Hairspray, that... There's kind of a homogenisation of people in musical theatre when they're gorgeous and fit and all look the same. But actually, you kind of want a personality, and that's what all the leading roles are about. Well, it's about characters. Do you know what I mean? And you have to be able to get across a character. And if you're um, very, what's the word, status quo, and very average mean, then do you know what I mean? You're not going to be able to say, wow, I'm a different sort of character and draw people's attention in. And you kind of need the oddities and the eccentricities. Everybody in this building that I spoke to, I said, what about this Sharon? How are you finding her? They said, you know what she does? She makes the song sound different every night. Now, how do you do that? There's only so many notes, aren't there? It's just how I feel each night. I really do go by how I feel each night, what I get from the audience, the, the state of mind that I'm in and, and the places that the song takes me to. And also um, having enough experience and knowledge of my voice to be able to say, let me try something new and, and stretch myself so it stays fresh for me. When the phone rang, they said, would you do this? How did you feel? Because you've done so many huge roles in all the big shows from The Lion King to Chicago. We Will Rock You, I think, was one of your best where you just made it your own. Mm, it. Um, and then you come into this. It's a smaller role, but I, it is the role where you can steal it. You have one big number and it does bring the house down, mm. doesn't it? I, I mean, here's Bray's a show that I, I saw when it first opened here and absolutely loved it. And then my other half saw it in... Um, the States on Broadway and just said it was a fantastic role for me and when it came about I was doing Holby so I, I wasn't even seeing you just think well you know sometimes a role is not for you and you know it passes you by and then when the opportunity came up I was just like yeah I'd love to do it I think I love Maybelle she's feisty she talks in rhyme do you know what I mean she, she's opinionated but she cares for those children and she she sees in Tracy this spark this naivety but also this this wonder of the world and this zest for life and also she's a fantastic dancer and she knows she's just she just looks at people as people and she doesn't really get the whole color thing and that's so refreshing and, and gorgeous to Maybell that she decides yes yeah, she will go on this journey with this this wonderful creative fearless child and and take up the mantle and you know take her kids with her and the the number I know where I've been is like I have two uh, the songs in the show are fantabulous and I love them all but I have two favorite songs one of them is without love which is the song that you get before I know where I've been which is just self-explanatory without love what's the point and then I know where I've been because I think that I know where I've been is really the crux of that other side of the story you know the the, 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 the civil rights movement and the, the black power and the fight for equality and you know the racial injustice and and just that tells you where Maybell is and where her head is at and why she's gone on this journey with these kids and with Tracy in particular and I just adore it it's an absolute dream to sing I don't know how you feel at the moment, but life's a bit difficult. Nobody's got any money. It's pouring with rain. We've just had snow <laughs> over the winter. Uh, everybody's depressed. I, I don't want to go and see a show where all the cast are dead at the end. I mean, God bless them, is. But th this is an optimistic story, isn't it? This is a story that you're going to come in and you're going to think, but you're going to laugh and you're going to enjoy and you're going to come out on you're a high. You're going to do all those things. You're, you're going to be dancing at the end. You know, if you're able to get up and you... The, 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 it takes the audience, it sweeps the audience up and people do get up and dance at, at the end of the show and it's it's a feel-good, upbeat, sunshine, happy, thought-provoking, fun fest. And then we look at you and we see why you're here today. It's difficult you being here because you're a TV star, you became a huge celebrity and very popular on Holby. Everybody loved you in that and then you walked away from it. Um, they want you back, the public want you back, why aren't you back? Um, it, it's really funny you saying that. I'm, I've always been in theatre. I've been performing since I was six and I've, theatre is my great, great love. Um, as a jobbing actor, you take the gig where the work is. Do you know what I mean? And Holby, wonderful as it is, was another gig. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, you know, some kind of thought provoking, ambitious step. It wasn't anything like that. It was a move. This is my next stage to Hollywood. It was another job. I'm an actor. You go where the work is. I'd, I'd done TV stuff, of, of course, before, but I'd never been on a long running TV series. And so from my standpoint, it was learning the whole technical way that television works and when you're doing it day in day out you actually have the chance to ask questions when you're a guest and you're in for a couple of days there isn't a time to sit around with the cameraman and say what's a dirty shot what does it mean when you say shoot across the line you find out all those things um just watching people work holby 
for me was a fantastic thing in that way because you had so many guests so you had your core of 17 people who range from people who'd just come out of drama school to people like Robert Powell who have done everything and anything in the business and then you're getting constant guests on like Sean Phillips and Ron Moody and Linda Bellingham and then you're getting kids who have just come out of college and, and they're eager and they're keen and they're nervous and they remind you what you were like when you first joined but it is this this just melting pot of knowledge and experience and it's a real privilege to sit back and, and watch people doing their scenes and and people have honed their craft people are learning their craft just gathering all that information and I absolutely loved being able to delve into this character for that period of time and go through different journeys with her but at the end of the day I am a musical theatre performance and I, I really don't feel like I've stepped back in any way I'm just continuing my journey doing different things and maybe the next thing will be a TV job maybe it'll be a radio play maybe it might be a show on Broadway wherever wherever the business takes me I'm quite willing and able to go and if we look at what you've done since two big things the first thing I saw you at was a Ken Dodd do at the London <laughs> Palladium and you sung a few songs there it was an odd show in a sense that it was just a mix of amazingly talented people like well, yourself it's very eclectic like Ken <laughs> do you know what I mean I think it was very telling of the kind of man that he is and the kind of talent that he draws around him and, he, and he's willing to pull from every last aspect and, and you know, totally show off his eccentricities as well what that made me think, though, was that you deserve your own Sharon D. Clark show. I would love, I would pay good money, and I never pay to see a show as I'm not paying today, but I would pay to see the Sharon D. Clark show because I'd love to see you just showing off for 90 minutes by yourself. Is there any way that will happen? Why haven't you done it so far? I've, I've done a couple of one woman shows already um, further back in my career, as it were, and um, hopefully, if things go right, I'd like to plan a series of concerts and, and see, see how that happens. And if that does come off, I'll let you know what's happening. And you could tell the people and they can come along as well I know I sound insane and I keep saying this every time I talk to you but there is nobody in the business like you and oh, your voice God, is just God given and inspiring were you always like that was there a point when you woke up one day and thought oh god I can now sing or have you always been able to sing um, I've been singing since I was about six I went to dance school in Clapton with Ivy Travers and we did everything I did tap ballet vaudeville pantomime concerts I mean th that for me was a fantastic training ground I kind of did it all when I was quite young it's funny because a lot of the young dancers we were warming up yesterday and I'm very flexible but they don't really see me dancing in the show and they, you know I'm one of the older members of the cast and I went into a split and they were like oh my god you know Jesus we didn't know you could do that and it's just like I've, it's something I've been doing from a very very young age I may not be dancing like they are in the show no but but that used to be me so it's all still in there <laughs> just waiting to come out just waiting to come out if the old bones will let it talking of things coming out the last time we we saw you in in a, in a basque and in, in a boobalicious top was in we will rock you are we ever going to see anything like that because we get a touch of that today don't we we get a little bit you get a little bit of that but it's just just depends on people's visions and how they see you I'm a big woman <laughs> and lots of people don't think of that as sexy and don't really think of you and put in oh my god seeing dance. you in we will rock you there isn't a man in that audience who didn't think you were sexy trust me <laughs> but even that was a part that no one really thought was for me do you know what i mean and when i walked into the audition um i could see that they were a bit like oh okay what have we got here because on paper she's not me do you know what I mean? She was um, the super sexy vixen of all, of all vixens and you imagine her to be tall, blonde, slim, do you know what I mean? And it, she wasn't me and I could see them going, what, why are you here? <laughs> was what, that until you opened your mouth? That was until I opened my mouth. And then when I opened my mouth and, and did the scene and did the song, I could see, you know, people's visions and ideas changing, which was a, a wonderful place to be at. And also what that show did for me is that it was the first time that I didn't take over a role in the West End. I actually originated a role. And so it really fulfilled, fulfilled a dream for me that someone took a chance on me and said, yeah, we'll have you opening the show. But also opening that type of show in those kind of costumes and being the, the ruler of Planet Marl and, and Go, Goglesoft was just, it was a trip, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Is it a lot of fuss and a lot of hard work, though, going into a show that you've got to create and it starts with a blank piece of paper and then Ben's there putting his two pen in and you've got Brian putting the musical side in. With, with this, you just turn up and it's already there and then you make it your own. With that, you've got to go through months of planning. Is it worth it going through all that, putting it together to get an original role? Yeah. <laughs> 
I would definitely say so. Have, have it been something that I dreamt of doing? That I wanted someone to believe in me to be able to take up that mantle and run with it. It was well worth it. And it's that whole thing of finding your own way of doing stuff and it, yours being the original template. And people, you know, take from that or do their own things when they take over. But, you know, I know that I am known as a killer queen which is a fantastic thing to have under my repertoire as well as Lola. Do you know what I mean? People in the musical theatre business know me as Killer Queen and that's, that's fantastic. And if you want to hear that, it's the CDs out now. How much on an average year do you make from that CD? Hundreds of thousands of people must buy it. I mean, cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> I get a little check through the post, you know, every, every quarterly or something. It's not great big money, but it's like, oh, nice, that'll be a meal out. And you deserve it because that's going to go on forever. I mean, as long as that show's running, people are going to leave that theatre and buy it. And it's so amazing that you're on that. And it is totally unique and the fact that it is still running I mean when we first started two weeks in we were given our notice well it was going around the West End that we were closing and we'd been given our notice we hadn't and we were still trying to get people in and then we did the party at the palace and I think that was what did it for people you know the reviews have been saying that the show was rubbish and you know the book was pants and all this kind of stuff but people were able to see for themselves and hear that the singing was of a phenomenal standard do you know what I mean and when for me standing on the, on the side of the stage on the wings listening to Tony Vincent and, and Hannah Jane Fox singing those songs you know Tony just sounding like an angel and then rocking it out then you've got Kerry Ellis doing only the good die young at the end of act one and you just that just the standard of the voices was phenomenal and you know quite different in that style of musical theatre that people were allowed to sing how they sing they didn't have to try and fit into a particular box or have a particular sound it was do what you do how you do it change it up brian used to love it when we change things up do you know what i mean he wasn't one for right that's your formula that's exa exactly how you sing at night after night you know i i change stuff and go what are you going to do tonight do you know he was really up for that organic raw live performance and that was an absolute joy. Visually, it's fantastic. I mean, like with all the screens and the costumes and the way everything looks, do you know what I mean? It does take you on that journey. Um, would I ever go back? Never say never. What I would like to do is if the show goes to Broadway, that's where I'd like to do it. Brian, you have been told. The nicest thing I can say from all the people in the theatre is the way you treat them. Like Chloe, we just spoke to her. I mean, this is her first big gig. One day she was ill and you just went to her and said, you're ill, this is theatre, it doesn't matter. Because you can blow this whole thing out of proportion. Like I was saying to her, really, it only matters within this 100 mm. yards of the theatre. Nobody outside cares, mm. do they? No. You're brilliant at that. But it's just, it just it's the way you have to be. When, once you're here, you're a family and you have to run it like a family and you, you have to take care of each other. And there's no point putting anybody under any pressure or making someone feel small or humiliating everybody. We all have to work together. We all have to come together. And that's people in the cast, that's the backstage crew, that's the technicians, that's the ushers at the front of house. You know, when you come into the building as an audience, the ushers are the first people that you meet and they, they set the tone for how the evening is, is going to be. And so it is one big, family and we have to treat each other well and, and with respect and with love and you know when when someone is young and they don't have the experience that's where you have to kick in I do have that experience I do have 25 years in the business worth of experience which is a fantastic thing to be able to say especially because you're only 32 oh my god you can come again <laughs> but you've got to be able to say to people look it is just a show and you you've been on for five months and you haven't been off and you're not well take the time that is why that is the one godsend gift privilege that you have when you're in the West End is that you have an understudy because they make sure that the show continues and you know it's not a, it's not really about you it's making sure that the show goes on but you do have that proviso and so if you've done five months straight and everybody's going down in the building with chest infections and, and stomach aches and people are having diarrhea and they're vomiting why, why are you trooping on because if you don't take the time off today and have that day off two weeks down the line you might need two weeks off do you know what I mean? And then you feel rather worse that you're not in. And when people love their job, they don't want to go off. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, take the day. So what? I think your humility is inspiring because in this business, normally ego comes before humility, doesn't it? Oh gosh, no, it's, it's about people for me. I've, I've always been a people person. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be doing social work. So, <laughs> I would. And so- it, I think if I didn't do this, I'd be in prison. I don't <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I love, I love people. I love working with people. And that, that, I want to come into a building where there's a great atmosphere where people are like hi and there's hugs and you know there's there's good honest respect respect and gorgeousness going on i don't want to be in a place where there's egos and people giving it the big holier than now and i am this and it doesn't make for a happy working space you know no one likes that 
Congratulations on being you. You know I love you. You're tremendous. Oh, you're in hairspray. Sharon D. Clark, you're amazing. You're on here at the Shaftesbury. I'll see you soon. Okay, God bless, baby. Mwah.